Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're making a Korean purple rice. Besides talking about what is purple rice and what is the health benefit of eating purple rice, I'm also gonna teach you three different ways of cooking rice, including using a rice cooker, an instant pot, and also cook your rice on a stove top. Check it out. Hi new friend, this is Erica right here. I'm a Taiwanese citizen currently living in America. Cooking and traveling are my passion, so I'm here to share a few of my favorite Asian recipes. On top of that, I also make videos talking about food knowledge and the history background of the dish on this channel. So if that interests you, please subscribe and keep watching. In a modern age where people's living standard continue to rise, eating healthy has become a pursuit for all of us. Rice is an irreplaceable, stable food source for most Asians, but refined white rice itself compared to other grains is missing its healthy fiber, vitamins, and minerals. Even though I love a healthy bowl of white rice, but since I'm turning 30 this year, I figure it's probably time to eat for nutrients rather than taste sometimes. So today I want to show you my new favorite type of rice, the Korean purple rice. Which simply put is to mix in black rice and our white rice to create this purple color rice. The purple color is made by the black rice color staining the white rice. If you prefer to be even healthier, you can even add more grains to it such as sprouted brown rice, barley, and green peas to lower the ratio of refined white rice even more. Now the true question is, what type of rice should we be using into making purple rice? Let's take a look together. When it comes to choosing a black rice, there are two main types to choose from. The glutinous white rice, which is also called the sweet rice or the sticky rice, and the non-glutinous black rice. Even though there's people cooking with both type of black rice, but the typical Korean purple rice are normally made with the black glutinous rice. Because it gave the rice a stickier consistency when cooked and gave it a slightly sweeter taste than the normal black rice. Black glutinous rice not only have more fiber than white rice, it also contains D2 type of acid that I couldn't pronounce, which are two essential fatty acids that the body cannot synthesize or convert by itself. It is also rich in vitamin B1, niacin, and iron that's perfectly suitable for women, especially pregnant and postpartum mothers. When it comes to white rice, there's three main type of rice that you can find in the market nowadays. Long grain rice such as Thai jasmine rice and Indian basmati rice. It is anywhere from three to four times as long as it's white and take on a drier, fluffy texture when cooked. Median grain rice are the most common seen Chinese rice, which is about twice as long as it's wide. And it will become more moist and tender when cooked. Short grain rice is used in Korean and Japan a lot. You might also see it being called as sushi rice, which are normally sweeter, moistier, and stickier when cooked. To make the perfect bowl of Korean purple rice, we'll be mixing the black glutinous rice with the medium or short grain white rice. Not only because the Koreans don't really eat long grain rice in general, but also the texture of the short grain and medium grain white rice can give our purple rice more moisture and tender result. Depending on your cooking method or your unique setup, the amount of water you add in with your rice will depend on that. To make Korean purple rice, we're using mainly white rice and a little bit of the black glutinous rice. Also, the more you add, the darker the purple shade will be. When it comes to making a purple rice, I will be considering myself be making the white rice with a little bit of sticky rice inside. So the amount of water I put in is based on the exact same amount of water I will be cooking white rice on. There are many different ways to cook rice and it feels like everybody have their own preference way to do so. But to help you out, today I'm going to teach you three different type of ways to cook white rice or purple rice. But first, let's mix our grains together. Screenshot! Here's an ingredient that we'll need for two to three servings of purple rice. We'll need short or medium grain white rice, black gluten rice, and some water. A perfect bowl of rice, it can be very different depending on personal preference, on the texture and consistency. The cooking method below and the amount of water I use, it depends on my preference of the rice, which is fluffy, moist, but still chewy. I call it the doin doin texture. 
If you like a different texture and consistency than my preference of rice, you can add or take away one tablespoon of water at a time. After two to three attempts, you should be able to find that sweet spot for yourself. No matter how are you prepare to cook your rice, washing and soaking the rice is crucial for any method. I have made a video before to teach you how to wash your white rice. It will also apply on brown rice, black rice, or even glutinous rice that we're using today. I'll leave a link up here for you. But simply put, just keep washing your rice till the water turn from this creamy white color to almost clear. Then add in your ratio of water for the cookware to soak for 20 minutes. This will allow the rice to have time to absorb the water before it heats up, which result in a more moist purple rice. If you eat rice more than once a week, I will highly recommend you to get one of these rice cookers. A simple rice cooker like this only cost me $30, which saved me a lot of time and effort in cooking rice every day. Not to mention they also have the other brown rice setting, quinoa, quick rice, oatmeal, satay, slow cook, and steaming option that you can have a lot of different use into this machine. I'll leave my rice cookers link in the description box down below for you. This is not sponsored, but I want to share with you because a rice cooker does not have to be super expensive. There's a very simple type like this, and there's also very high-end Japanese, Korean, or Chinese rice cooker that we don't really need it. The best thing about a rice cooker is that it does not require any monitoring. All we need to do is to put in our soaked rice and press quick rice, or some might call it flash rice, turbo mode, or fast cook. The difference between this setting and the white rice setting is that white rice setting include a period of soaking time for rice. But since we already pre-soaked the rice, we can just click the quick rice button and let it start cooking right away. But if we're talking about day-to-day -day operation, I like to wash my rice, put it in the rice cooker, add in the amount of water, cover it, and use the white rice setting. And that will include the soaking time, the cooking time, and even the steaming time after. After you kick the white rice button, all you need to do is wait and let it do its thing. When the timer is up, I will open the lid and fluff the rice to let out the extra steam, cover it up again, and let it sit for 10 minutes before eating. Super simple. Now, Instant Pot is such a great invention. It not only has so many different cooking methods such as pressure cook, slow cook, saute, and steam, that you can make almost any dish in it. It even comes with a rice setting, multi-grain setting, and poultry setting. A pressure cooker can cook rice really, really fast. When you heard people talking about rice and water ratios one to one, that's talking about a pressure cooker. Because we don't need to worry about water evaporating in a pressure cooker. But there is some downside of a pressure cooker as well. First, the inner pot of the pressure cooker is not non-stick. As you can see, because I'm cooking sticky rice with white rice, it's most likely that the rice will be sticking on the bottom of the pot. Also, depending on the size of your instant pot, I believe my pressure cooker is the biggest size, so the minimum amount of water I need to use to pressure cook is two cups of liquid. So to me, if I want to cook rice in my pressure cooker, I have to cook at least two cups of rice, which for my family of two, it's a lot. But if you don't own a rice cooker, Instant Pot actually cook pretty good rice. After you put in the rice, double check the handle point to sealing. If you're using the rice setting, it will automatically set into 12 minutes of low pressure cooking. If you don't want to use the rice setting, you can also press the pressure cook for 3 minutes on high pressure. Make sure you turn off the keep one function because we don't need that. For the best result, after the time is up, let it natural release the steam for 10 minutes, then quick release the rest of the pressure. There's not much left anyways. Then open a lid, fluff the rice real quick to release the extra steam, and scoop them all out. I will not leave my rice in the instant pot for even a minute because over time it's sticking to the bottom of the pot. I don't like that. Such a waste. The most traditional way of cooking rice is probably on a stove top. To cook through the whole batch of rice without burning the bottom, you need to find a thicker bottom pot to cook your rice on a stove, such as the enamel cast iron or clay pot. The thick bottom will help hold the heat and minimize the extreme temperature changes. In another word, prevent the bottom from burning while the upper rice is still cooking. 
Cooking your rice on a stove top with a pot, you will lose the most moisture content during the cooking process. So we'll need a little bit more water than usual. Depending on your preference of the rice texture and your cookware, the amount of water you need to cook on a stove top, rice and water ratio is around 1 to 1.2. Some people prefer 1.1, some people prefer 1.3. That will be something that you have to figure out yourself. Using a pot to cook your rice requires a lot of monitoring. You have to stay there to change the temperature, make sure the water is not overflowing, and the consistency is harder to control as well. Now we already soak our rice for 20 minutes, just put it on the stove and bring it to a rapid boil. When it starts to boiling like this, cover up with the lid and turn the heat to medium for 6 minutes. When the 6 minutes up, turn it to low heat for another 5 minutes. Well, you may be very tempting to open up the pot to see how the rice doing. Don't do that. Open the lid during boiling process at any stage will throw off the water evaporation rate. When the time's up, turn off the heat and let the rice set with the lid on still for another 15 minutes. With the remaining heat, the rice is still slow cooking right now. After 15 minutes is up, open up the lid, fluff the rice, and done! You can see that cooking with a clay pot on a stove does have a special advantage, which this will create some rice crust on the bottom and the side of the pot that some people love. Like I said earlier, it's really hard to tell you exactly how long and how much water you should add into your pot to cook your rice on your stove top because everybody has a different setting. But if you don't like the result of your rice, there might be two problems. One is the texture of the rice, soft or hard, and the other one is the moisture content, too wet or too dry. If you find that your rice is cooked through perfectly, but it's a little bit too wet or a little bit too dry, you will have to adjust the amount of water you put in. But if it's not about the moisture content, it's about your individual rice. If you feel like the rice is too hard or too soft, you'll have to adjust the cooking time according to that. Now look at all the rice that I cook, I have so much left over. Here I'm making a video next Monday to show you how to keep your leftover rice in the fridge for a long time and keep it fresh and moist. I'll leave a link up here when it's out for you so you can check it out. If you ask me what is my favorite way of cooking rice, I'll always tell you that I prefer rice cooker, then instant pot, then stove top. But the best way for me is not always the best way for you. Give them all a try and leave a comment down below to tell me what is your preference way of making rice. Now before it cools down, I want to store them all into the fridge and let's learn some Chinese, shall we? The word of the day today is Han Shi Zi Mi Fan, Korean style purple rice. The first two characters Han Shi means Korean style. And the last two characters Zi Mi Fan means purple rice. So Korean style purple rice in Chinese is Han Shi Zi Mi Fan. Thank you for cooking with me till the end. Let me know if you like this recipe by giving this video a thumbs up. It's only gonna take you a second, but it means a lot to me. I make video on YouTube every Monday and Thursday, so remember to hit that bell and you'll never miss out. If you want to learn more about white rice, how to cook them, how to wash them, the problem about arsenic and rice and all that, check out these two videos. Last but not least, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!